Can you save money on labor restoring or building a Mustang or a Camaro, a street rod or a custom in a shop in Mexico? We checked one out in Juarez, just across the border from El Paso, Texas. A lot of people think no, that just because it's Mexico, a third world country, that they can't build nothing comes out nice from over here but you're about to go into a shop where the you know the car the work is amazing there's cars in museums in the u.s that he's built um he's built uh what one two, three like i think four cars for sema so far um out of this shop what's the name of the, the shop world. it's called street toys in Juarez, mexico and it's owned by? By Jesse Gonzalez. Known as? Chewy Dog. <laughs> All right, okay. Chewy. So, <laughs> el, 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 you're el great Juan to be at your shop. You're going to show us a few cars, I right? wanted to drag my camera into Street Toys. We walked past this Viper Cuda that Chewy built for SEMA, and I'll show you some more pictures of that later. Inside, first car, there's a 71 GTO convertible. Looks like maybe they're patching the front fender on it. To the left is the final assembly room with Mustangs and Camaros uh, getting finished up. To the right here is the fabrication shop. There's Michael Lightborn talking with a Street Toys employee. I really love this colorful mural on the wall of these street rods. And then the adjacent wall has another mural with another street rod. And on the opposite side of the room, we can see a colorful mural of an AFX Mustang from the mid-60s. But we went back into the final assembly room here to kind of see if we could find Chewy and get a little tour. I mean, look at that Camaro. There's Chewy right there. Chewy, would you show us your, your shop? Do you mind? Shop. This is uh, Street Toys, Hot Rods and Customs. We do hot rods, muscle cars, uh, basically anything car related. What do you got? Like here, this Camaro, a first generation Camaro. Did you, is this a restoration? Did you when did you build this car? Uh, this is this car we built uh, approximately four years ago, I believe. Uh, we put it together for a customer out of the states, and it came in for an upgrade on the suspension. So what uh, is it, stock wise? Yeah, it's, it's a, a what? It's a six. So it's a it's a street rod then. It's yes, been it's, built up. Yeah, it's a, a it's custom. more of a, a pro touring. What they call a pro touring nowadays. It's got the Detroit Speed uh, front clip and rear clip. It's got the LS3 with a six speed, uh, the big brakes. You know, most of the stuff we kept everything stock on the outside, kind of make it look like a stock uh, a Camaro, but uh, modified the whole drivetrain suspension. Okay, and then okay. this. Wow, this Mustang, what do we got here? This is a 60, 66, 66 Mustang Fastback that we're restoring for a customer. This car is mostly uh, going together original. Uh, three, well, that's not original under the hood. What's that? Yeah, it's original. It's a 289 for, for the Mustang. Uh, four speed, uh, nine inch. Uh, it's nothing nothing special. It's not a Well, GT here's the big question. Like you got people here, customers. Are they from the United States? Are they predominantly or from... Are they from Mexico? Can you get a car done yeah. cheaper here? Yeah, Tell us we, a little we, bit. We like have, uh, like this Mustang right here. What's this? This is a Mustang for somebody out of the States also. Uh, it came in for a restoration, uh, modification, modernization also with uh, uh, basically a, a stock exterior, but uh, upgraded suspension and, uh, and, and disc brakes. And I think uh, obviously the cost of labor over there in the States wouldn't compare to the cost of labor here. So you so, can do one cheaper. Yeah, yeah. Well, is that why your shop is so full here? I think so. Uh, we've got quite a bit of cars. I don't know if you've been through the shop. We've got yeah. How many employees you got? We've got 18 full-time uh, people right now. And they're, I mean, it's busy. You hear everything going back here. Let's just keep going through because I want to see these cars. Okay, and then you got one on a. Looks like it's on a. Uh, a rotisserie right here. What is this? This is a '67 uh, coupe that we're doing for a, for a customer also. Uh, it came in probably about eight months ago and we're doing a complete resto, uh, rotisserie resto uh, stock. Uh, this customer wants it stock so we, we went ahead and did all the overspray like the factory and everything else. Can you tell us about what it would cost to do this, to restore, to restore that car? I mean, yeah. what, what's a ballpark figure he'd pay uh, on that? I think we're, we're I don't right, want to hold you in anything. We're right but around about, uh, for a Mustang, right around 25 uh, labor, 25,000 labor. 
plus parts and materials. That's uh, that's more or less what the cost okay. of the Mustang is. Now, what's this, a GTO? This, this I mean, you a, do stuff like this. Yeah, this huh? is a GTO. We restored it also uh, probably about uh, four years, three years ago. We did it for a customer, and uh, he put a little dent in it, and we're repairing that also. We also do the maintenance for them. Now, this is another room. What's this room in uh, here? This is the fabrication shop. This is where we do all the mod modifications and repairs, rust repair or uh, uh, suspension work or whatever it is that we're going to upgrade. And do. Uh, this is the mock-up stage here, repair, welding, uh, modifications, whatever uh, is going to be the case. And, and each car is different. You know, what I'm noticing here is a lot of Eleanor type stuff. Like here's a fastback that, that you're, what are you, fabric? is this the fabrication stage now? Yes, and yes we're in the mock-up uh, fabrication stage. Uh, this is going to take a coyote style uh, motor in it and uh, the customer wants it to look like a pro touring Eleanor. So now I've heard that you do more uh, metal fabrication here than a, a shop in the States. Like I saw one in here one day and uh, you, you put uh, side panels on these Eleanors, right? And they're metal? Yeah, we, we've custom built uh, uh, Eleanor uh, steel body kits instead of the fiberglass. Uh, kits that, that are available on the market, so uh, it lasts a little bit longer and it's it's a, a, a lot better all the way around. More so, durable and everything. Yeah, more durable and obviously people like the metal a lot better than uh, the fiberglass kits. The only thing we use is the nose, the fiberglass nose, because of the complexity of building it out of metal and the weight. The weight of this big massive nose made out of metal would be uh, pretty heavy. This, this is a 41 Willis that we're that we're building uh, for a customer also. We actually make this body. This is our, our own body that we make. We have the molds and stuff to make it. You make National Scout that we're doing for a customer. Usually we don't do too many trucks, but uh, this is for uh, for a customer a friend that we're doing and we're upgrading it with the uh, Chevrolet motor and uh, modern drivetrain, air conditioning and stuff like that. So it make it a little bit more reliable, a little bit more what he wants. Now I already know this is a SEMA car back here. I want to hear about this because this is your third car you built for SEMA. Tell, tell me about it. This car is actually getting built for uh, SEMA uh, 2019 and hopefully we'll be able to finish it and, and kind of uh, show it off over there. This what is it? actually painted by Gene Wingfield. That's why you see this car in paint already because uh, it was the only opportunity he had to come in and, and shoot it. So. Uh, the customer, the owner, uh, wanted him to paint it and do his, his, his uh, famous fade paint job on it. Which As you can see, it's already been painted before it's finished, so we're kind of having to work kind of backwards a little bit, and uh, hopefully we won't damage the paint and, and, and stuff like that. So. Uh, wow, that's, that's beautiful. Good. That's an Eldorado Barretts convertible, right? Correct, correct. We're also upgrading it with an LSA engine in it. Uh, also, uh, uh, automatic overdrive air ride suspension and, and, and a lot of stuff that's been uh, uh, being made has to be custom made and fit because uh, we're also building up kind of like a pro touring style car that can, can actually be driven and, and hopefully uh, long distances and stuff like that really reliable. Okay. okay and then what's the third part of your this works this is still in fabrication yeah, this here is right? Fabrication. This used to be our old prep bay which uh, already got converted into fabrication because of the lack of space as you can see a lot of the cars that we've got we've got pretty much a full house. We got close to uh, 15 restoration uh, uh, builds that we're doing right now. This is another uh, uh, international scout that we're doing for, for a guy. And uh, this is our body shop. This is where we uh, do the final stages of uh, uh, primer, bondo, what is known as, as, as uh, regular body work. Uh, is this an Eleanor that's... This uh, is also an, uh, an Eleanor that we're gonna convert, uh, must say that we're gonna convert to an Eleanor. And uh, right now we're trying to, uh, it's, it's not done, it's not, it doesn't have the body kit on it. It's gonna have a metal body kit, but what we're trying to do right now because of all the humidity outside, we're gonna primer it in uh, a special uh, uh, epoxy primer that we use. Uh, they look a lot nicer and, and good for pictures and stuff and all bare metal, but uh, for rust and, 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 and contamination reason, we need to get them in primer soon because of the, the, the time of the, the Okay, so if a guy brought a, a uh, fast back in and he said I want an Eleanor you could build it and have mostly metal except the front and sure. how much would he have in it I mean would he save a lot of money <laughs> over building one yeah, in the states they're, they're they're pretty expensive they take they take some time to build but uh to me it'd be worth it uh to you could probably uh we building it out, for us to build it out of metal it probably costs as much as somebody building it out of fiberglass over there you know so I think it's oh. a, a big advantage uh, you know to, 
for the same price. You know, I can't tell you exactly what it will cost because they're all they're all different. Everybody wants a different motor. Everybody wants a different suspension and stuff like that. So right, uh, you know, cost cost vary. What's this? The uh, this is a, a like I say, they they're getting ready to prep it to put it in primer. So it don't start uh, rusting on us. The, all these doors have already been at their uh, rust repair done. Uh, so oh, that, that's so, on the that is on the international. No, this is for a '64 uh, pickup that we're oh. doing, and all the rust that was repaired. You know, all the holes that were welded up and all the stuff. Uh, we make sure everything's checked and, and, and clean, and, and it's a it's a decent door now. So we need to get in our primers before it starts rusting. What about this car here? What's this? This is a, 60, a 66 uh, Mustang Fastback also, which are kind, kind of doing a resto mod style car. Also, uh, uh, we use these door handles out of a uh, uh, 69 uh, uh, Pontiac Grand Prix that we had left over. But it will, it'll all be painted body color. We sunk in the, uh, the, the key recess. And then we did something real, real different that I haven't seen here done too, too much. I don't know if you can tell with the camera, but uh, could you tell we we blended and matched the fender to the to the door pillar? Uh, we eliminated the molding, and it's going to be a, flu a flush sitting uh, windshield. Uh, the, 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 and also gave these lines uh, all this work to make the make so we can body work all that smooth, and, and, and there'll be no. No, uh, no moldings. So this is going to be blacked out. This is going to be uh, completely painted bumpers and, and uh, no chrome around the windshield and stuff like that. So all this metal work here that was done, you can could, you could see where uh, obviously the people that know the Mustangs know that this is not the way the fender is supposed to be. We did it this way so we can body work it and we'll have a nice little clean body line. Everything will be nice. paired up. Now is that a, what, is that yeah, hood that, fiberglass? That, that's fiberglass that we're just going to get in and use that because of the uh, ease of using it and, 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 and the, the weight look. reduction and, and, and all the look that. Is, is good yeah, the look is good we're not trying to change the car we're not trying to change the, the, the shape to where it doesn't look like a mustang we're just changing details to where uh, they'll be hard to tell even for a mustang uh, somebody uh, that knows a mustang's good uh, they'll be they'll have a hard time to spot the differences right away what's without, going uh, in under the hood on this and what engine uh, this is uh, we've got a 351 uh, Windsor uh, that the customer provided to us. He, it's already been dynoed and uh, souped up and all that. So is this a uh, customer from the United States? This is also a customer from uh, out of El Paso, and uh, we've been working on this car about a year now, and uh, we're getting real close to finishing the fabrication and getting ready to start painting. Now, how do they get a hold of you if somebody wanted to? We've got a uh, website uh, on the internet. We've got a Facebook page. Uh, we've got uh, Instagram. We've got most of the stuff like that. So and, where do they go to? Uh, Street Toys Hot Rods and Customs on Facebook and uh, StreetToysMX.com on the regular uh, web. Uh, all the information is there, emails and stuff like that. Usually people will contact us, send us a, an email and send us some pictures and we'll start the, uh, the negotiation process and, and, and the quote process, you know, with, uh, uh, with talks over the pictures and, and what you want and we'll put a little, a little contract together for you and then uh, we'll, 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 we'll work it out. Now, what's the situation getting your car across the border and uh, all that? Is we, that? A I've actually got somebody already set up, kind of to pick cars up in El Paso, if, in case you've got uh, uh, issues of bringing it over, or you don't know how it works, or you're afraid of customs, or you don't know how the, all that works. So we've got a pretty neat, neat setup. We we haven't had any problems or any any issues with that. So uh, I can help you with that personally, and and, and getting the car across, so you don't have to drive it across yourself or, or go in a charge of waters if, if yeah. that's the, 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 the fear. The last thing we want to see that Cuda, okay. the Viper Cuda. Now, sure. before you go out there, the Viper Cuda, mm -hmm. you started with a Viper and you used Cuda bodywork and you, I saw the remains okay. of the Cuda out there. It's like the unit body left and you, you used the whole body on that car. Yeah. What you see here are the remains of a 1970 Cuda after Street Toys built their one-of-a-kind Viper Cuda. The Viper Cuda started with a Viper. Many builders have dropped a Viper engine, which is a V10, into an old Cuda. Instead, Street Toys rebodied a Viper with a Cuda body, which is much more difficult, but leaves the remains, as you see here, of the Cuda with its unit body structure. Uh, this is uh, not a Viper motor in a Cuda. This is a Viper, uh, a Cuda Viper, a Cuda body on a Viper. You know what I'm saying? So what we basically did was we gutted the Cuda completely. 
and mounted the body onto the Viper. So we can have the same uh, drivetrain, same uh, suspension, handling, and everything else, power, everything that the, that the Viper offered, uh, the, the CUDA is gonna have it because uh, we use everything, computer, hardness, even the dash is, is computer instruments, air conditioning unit. You know, we had to do a lot of modification to make it blend it and make it all work. I mean, from the outside, you think you're getting in a 70 CUDA, but when you get in there, yeah. you're getting into a Viper. It feels like the Viper, yeah. It feels like yeah. a Viper, yeah. and I don't know. I think it looks better than the Viper. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, hopefully, uh, it looks better, and hopefully most people like it. We've got a lot, a lot of good response from people. Wow. So what is this like? Is this like you've got a Viper engine, but is it is it exiting through old time exhausts that are different than a Viper? Uh, the Viper obviously, you know, has the exhaust uh, exiting right here on the side. And we had to fabricate an exhaust coming out the traditional way out the Viper exit in the rear, which uh, quieted it down a lot. I don't know if uh, you've ever heard of Viper. It's pretty loud and pretty, pretty uh, rump, rumpy. Yeah, the engine in the Viper is a V10. Let me show us the engine. mounted the uh, this is actually the uh, the, the shaker uh, scoop that we we mounted it to the to the uh, to the hood so we wouldn't have to uh, mount it here on the, on the engine obviously we couldn't do it because of the uh, massive engine that's in there but uh, we also custom made these panels for it these are all on there with uh, with a uh, quick fasteners which are removable and then these panels pop out and you can see and work and, and, and we actually we added a, a, a supercharger on it also to give it a little bit more more power than what the uh, V10 offers because of the added weight. Obviously, the uh, Cuda is a little bit heavier, mm -hmm. so we wanted to compensate a little bit with that, and uh, that should have given us at least another 100, 150 horsepower more to make up for the uh, weight difference. So under all this is the, the original stock wiring, harness, and everything like that. This car. Uh, should be able to be repaired by any Viper technician. Uh, it's the Viper seat. It's actually the Viper seat. We, we reused the Viper seat, the Viper console, the Viper dash. Uh, as you can see, we had to make custom panels for it and stuff like that and adapt it to, to, the, to the Viper body. It's a little bit further back uh, as, uh, than the uh, stock Cuda. And we got rid of the rear seat the, the, on, the, on the Cuda also. So we fa fabricated that rear roll bar there to kind of add to the look of the uh, kind of performance uh, car, kind of sporty. Uh, we added a system and uh, a lot of uh, handmade panels. Uh, you know, being a bigger body, I was able to extend the, the back seat a little bit. You don't have that, that windshield pillar that comes in on the Viper and hits you in the forehead almost when you get in and out. And uh, it's a lot more comfortable, in my opinion, than, than sitting in this Cuda than the regular Viper. The, the Viper uh, the Viper chassis was extended 10 inches. So we cut it down the middle. Uh, you can see pictures on our website if you go on there. Uh, the whole process I documented and there's a lot, a lot of pictures on there. Uh, we actually cut it down here, right right here down the middle and extended it 10 inches. The wheelbase was a lot shorter on the, on the Viper than on the Cuda. So we extended it 10 inches, I believe, if I can recall, and uh, shortened, uh, narrowed the track width approximately three inches front and rear to get the tires tuck in and, and fit the original uh, offset tire inside inside the Cuda body. This, this We had to make the exhaust so we can exit it out the rear, out the traditional way where the uh, Viper exhaust was. If you want, we can take it for a cruise. Okay, so fire it up. Yeah, but what 
street is uh, this? This is uh, Avenida Internacional here in uh, what is Mexico? What kind of looks does this car get going down the road? Uh, all kinds of. Is it like your piece of art? <laughs> yeah, and you get attachment, you get, especially working on this car for so long, you know, you get attached a little bit. I don't think anybody that really loves cars doesn't get a little attached. Uh, you kind of grow together, you know, with the car, especially when you spend so much time with them and uh, invest all this, a lot of your time figuring problems out and, and, and fighting the car sometimes with uh, stuff that it puts up a fight, you know, some cars put up a fight. This one was uh, pretty complicated and there was a lot of things that I couldn't figure out that we, we had to work on and think uh, think a lot about, you know. Sometimes there was times where we didn't work on the car, it's just, just going, sitting around and looking at it and observing it and kind of uh, trying to figure out which way we're going to go. There's no plan, there's no uh, restoration uh, manual, there's nothing for this, so everything has to be kind of done on the fly. It's that the uh, Viper sits a lot lower, it rides a lot lower to the ground. So obviously the Cuda body sits a lot lower to the ground now and that's where you get this uh, console s s seeming like it sticks up a little bit higher than the Cuda. But uh, remember, we're in a, on the Viper, we're not in a Cuda. We're only using the you know, uh, Cuda exterior, the, the outer shell. Do you think this thing's faster than, if you took a Viper that this was based on and raced it, which car would win, this one or the Viper? <laughs> I don't know, man, we'll have to find out. 